Hey guys, welcome to Lincoln to Retro. I'm your host, Lincoln Forcer, and today I'm going to be addressing issues that you guys have been having with a couple of my videos as far as installing RetroPie on Raspberry Pi 4. Now, with that said, if you're watching this for the first time, you are on the right video. This will show you how to set up RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi 4 and any other Raspberry Pi for that matter. Um, it is the standard manual installation. It is good to go. Um, you should be just fine if this is how you want to do it. If you've got another Raspberry Pi that you want RetroPie on, I highly suggest you go to the RetroPie site and download the image from them. It'll be a lot easier and a lot simpler. This is mainly geared towards people with the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, with that said, I'm going to have all the links you're going to need below as well as timestamps for this video. So you can go ahead and skip forward to any step of the process that you need, whether it's flashing the SD card or just getting to the installation process. Um, with that said, we're going to go ahead and jump over to my computer. I'm going to show you a couple websites. Okay, so we're on the raspberrypi.org website. We're in the download section for Raspbian Buster. We're going to download Raspbian Buster Lite. Just download the zip. You're also going to need to grab Etcher. This is the uh, program we're going to use to flash the image onto our SD card. Just a quick side note, if you do have an SD card that is over 32 gigabytes, uh, this this SD card needs to be formatted into FAT32. Unfortunately, you can't format uh, an SD card or USB drive into FAT32 if it's over 32 gigabytes in the Windows 10 operating system environment. There's another program you're going to need to use to do that. I've got a video on how to do that. I'll put a card up right now so you can click on that if you're not sure how to do that, and it will show you how to do that. Um, for those of you that have 32 gigabyte cards and smaller, you're you're just fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and minimize this window. Here we are. I've got Etcher open. I've already got my SD card inserted in my computer. We're gonna select our image, which is gonna be the Raspbian Buster Lite image right here. Click open. We're gonna select our target. Click a continue, and then we're gonna click flash. This image only shows up if you've got a card that is over 32 gigabytes uh, inserted into the um, computer because it's detecting it as a mass storage device. It's just wanting to make sure you actually want to flash the device. You can go ahead and click continue. It's fine. And now Etcher will flash the image onto our SD card. Uh, this could take a little while, so I'll be back with you guys as soon as it's done. Alrighty guys, once it's uh, completely flashed, you should get this message right here. You want to make sure that it does say one successful device. If it failed, you'll need to reflash until you do get this message. And click off of that. Just as a side note guys, you may get this message right here pop up for you. Once it's done flashing, this is perfectly normal. You do not want to format it, you just click cancel. And now we're done, we can actually move over to our Retro Pi. Alrighty guys, so once you've booted up your Raspberry Pi for the first time, it may reboot itself once. Just let it do what it's gonna do until you get to this screen right here where you can finally log in. Um, if this ever happens where the cursor shifts back to uh, the beginning of the line, all you gotta do is hit enter and that'll fix it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in. Username is going to be Pi. And password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Once we log in, we can go ahead and enter in our command lines. Uh, first one we're going to type in is going to be sudo space raspy-config and hit enter. Now once we're here, um, if you are not connected to Ethernet, you're going to want to set up your Wi-Fi. So you come down to Network Options, hit Enter. Come down to Wi-Fi, hit Enter. It's going to ask you to select the country that you're in or that you're using your Pi in. I've got to come all the way down to the end of this list because I'm in the U.S. And there we go. So it sets the Wi-Fi country to US, hit OK. This is where you're gonna enter in the name of your Wi-Fi network. 
and then once you hit enter um, it will take you over to where you can put in your password and then you should be good to go on Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi um, now I am connected to Ethernet so I'm not gonna worry about it so I'm gonna back out first thing we're gonna need to do is come down to advanced options once we are connected to internet and we're going to expand the file system we're gonna go ahead and hit enter Okay, so the root partition has been resized the file system will be enlarged upon the next reboot hit OK and we're gonna go ahead and reboot now once you hit escape on the keyboard we're gonna type in sudo space reboot space now and hit enter Alrighty guys, so once we're logged back in, we're going to go ahead and continue on with our command lines here. First one we're going to type in is going to be sudo space apt dash get space update and hit enter because we're going to be updating and upgrading the uh, Raspbian Buster Lite image. Once that's done, the next one we're going to type in is going to be sudo space apt dash get space upgrade and hit enter. Press Y for yes, hit enter. Alright guys, the next command we're going to enter in is going to be sudo space apt dash get space dist dash upgrade and hit enter. Alright guys, so once that's done, we need to clean up the packages, any files that were left over when the installation was taking place while we were upgrading and updating. Uh, the image so we're going to type in sudo space apt dash get space clean and hit enter all right guys and once that's done we're going to go ahead and we're going to reboot the system so you can actually use your arrow keys and we're going to find the reboot command which is right there and we're going to hit enter Alrighty guys, once we're back logged in, we're going to find our sudo raspy config command. We're going to hit enter. That'll enter us back in here and we're going to do some changes to this whole area here. The first thing you can do here, you can actually change your password from Raspberry to whatever you'd like. I suggest doing that for added security for your Pi. Um, we're going to do boot options later. But right now we're going to head back over into advanced options and hit enter. We're going to go into overscan. As you can tell, there's black borders around the screen. We're going to get rid of those. Go ahead and hit enter on overscan. And we're going to say no and hit enter. And it's going to disable the overscan compensation. Hit OK. Now we're going to come back to advanced options. We're going to come to memory split. We're going to hit enter. We're going to change 64 to 256. We're going to hit enter. We're going to go back into advanced options. We're going to come down to GL driver here. We're going to hit enter. Press Y for yes and hit enter again. Alrighty guys, once you see this screen, we're going to come down here to GL Fake KMS, hit enter, and it's going to enable that driver, click OK. Alrighty, now we're going to come down to localization options. We're going to change our local. So I'm going to come down here, find English US, so right now it's Great Britain. I just passed it up and we're going to use spacebar to select this and we're going to make sure we're 
getting the UTF-8 UTF-8 selection and we're going to deselect this one here we're going to hit enter we're going to come down we're going to select this one right here and hit enter it says it might take a while but it only takes a few seconds we're going to go back to localization options come down and change time zone I'm in the US and I'm in the central time zone so that's done. We're going to go back, change our keyboard layout. This is very important because if you don't change your keyboard layout to the country that it is set in, you could be typing some things that you are unaware that you're typing. So we're going to stick with the generic 105 key PC Intel here. As you can see, it's using the UK version of the keyboard. I need the US. So we're going to come down, go to other, come down to US. Go back up, select English US. We're going to use the default for the keyboard layout. Hit enter. We're not going to have a compose key. Hit enter. That's done. And earlier, if, uh, if you are connected to Ethernet, you can go ahead and change your Wi Fi country here as it was done earlier when I was showing you how to set up Wi Fi. Same process. Just hit enter, scroll down to your country, hit enter, and it will select that for you. We're going to go ahead and do a system reboot now, though. So I'm going to hit escape, I'm going to find sudo reboot now, and hit enter. Alrighty, guys, as you can tell, the black borders are now gone, and now we can head into the setup process to get RetroPie onto the Raspberry Pi 4. Alrighty guys, so the first command we're going to enter is going to be sudo space apt space install space git and hit enter. Press Y for yes and hit enter. Alrighty guys, once that's done, we're going to type in git space clone space dash dash depth equals one space https colon forward slash forward slash github dot com forward slash retropy forward slash retro pi dash setup dot git before you hit enter make sure you look over the command line make sure everything is spelt correctly and make sure you have it exactly as I have it because this is a case sensitive command line so once you have that done go ahead and hit enter Once that's done, we're going to type in cd space retropy dash setup. And again, make sure that it is exactly how I have it here and hit enter. All right, guys, now we can type in sudo space dot forward slash retropy underscore setup dot sh exactly how I have it and press enter alrighty guys once you see this screen go ahead and hit enter we're going to do the basic install so go ahead hit and hit enter and come over to yes and hit enter again Alrighty guys, now that the basic install is done, we are going to come down here and we are going to perform a reboot. Hit enter, yes, hit enter. Alrighty guys, once we're logged back in, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my controller now. 
because everything should work. As you saw, there was a RetroPie splash screen there for a second. Now that my controller is connected, we should be able to type in emulation station. I just start with em emu and I hit tab. It finishes it and we hit enter. And we have emulation station. Alrighty guys, so same thing as before, we go ahead and we set up our gamepad. Up, down, left, right, start, select. A, B, X, Y, L, R. Left trigger, right trigger, left thumb, right thumb. Left analog, up, down, left, right. Right analog, up, down, left, right. Set the hotkey, hit OK. Alrighty guys, and here we are in Emulation Station. Go ahead and select RetroPie here. I'm going to show you how to boot directly into Emulation Station so you don't have to enter that command every time you boot up your Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and enter the RetroPie setup. We'll head back over to our keyboard here. We're going to come down to Configuration Tools, Auto Start, and we're going to come down here to, actually the first one here, Start Emulation Station at Boot. Hit OK. Emulation is set to start at boot, hit OK. And back out, we'll test it out real quick. Perform a reboot, hit yes. And it boots directly into it for us. So we don't have to worry about typing in an emulation station every time we turn on our Raspberry Pi. Again, guys, this will work for any Raspberry Pi. This video was directed towards Raspberry Pi 4 users, uh, but this process will work on any Raspberry Pi if you choose to go this route instead of going to the RetroPi website and downloading the, the image from there and installing it that way. Anyway, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope it solves a lot of problems that you guys have been having. As always, guys, comment, like, and share this video if it did help you out. Also, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you know when I upload new videos. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.